discounts and commissions lesson are to understand how companies can maintain a profit while reducing job costs. We'll do that by identifying what a discount is and establishing a process for calculating flat rate and variable rate discounts. We'll also talk about what a commission is and how it can be used in the commercial printing industry. And we will use steps for calculating a commission to calculate commissions for salespeople. To discount something means to offer it at a sale rate or to sell it at a reduced price. A discount is a value or a percentage taken off the overall price of an item or a job. For example, if a printing company tells their client they are willing to offer a 10% discount on all jobs over $50,000, it is assumed that the 10% is taken directly off the $50,000. However, if a job is quoted for any sum below $50,000, the discount is not applied. Discounts can be based on a percentage, which we consider to be a variable rate discount, or they can be a flat rate or a set amount. When a discount is calculated, you must first make sure that you qualify for the discount before any discount can be taken. A flat rate discount is a certain value that is taken off the overall cost of an item or a job. It is the same for everyone as long as they qualify for the discount. For example, if a company is offering a $100 discount on all purchases over $1,000, the discount will be $100 for everyone who spends more than $1,000. It doesn't matter if they spend $1,000 or $5,000, they will get $100 off of their bill. The steps for calculating a flat rate discount are, one, identify the discount value, two, determine if you qualify for the discount, and then three, if you qualify for the discount, you can subtract the discount from the job cost or the item cost. So in this example, we will use the formula of taking the cost of the job, because we're not selling items, we're selling jobs in the graphic arts industry, and we will subtract the flat rate discount and whatever's left is the total cost to the customer. In this example, Jones Printing Company is offering $500 discounts for all new customers. Every job produced for a new customer will be reduced by exactly $500. How much will Susan pay for her printing job if she was quoted $1,750 to print 3,000 notepads? She has never worked with Jones Printing Company before. Following the steps for calculating the price to the customer, one, we need to identify what the value of the discount is. In this case, it's $500. Two, we need to determine if, if the person qualifies for the discount. In this case, Susan does qualify for the discount because she is a new customer, which is what you need to get the discount um, with this company. And then three, we'll take the job cost. She was quoted $1,750. We'll subtract the discount, in this case was $500, and then what's left is the total cost to the customer. So $1,750 divided by $500 means she will pay $1,250. In example two, Mary Ann has decided to send a pocket folder printing job to Evergreen Printing Company. She has never worked with them before. She has received a price quote for $11,600 to print 31,500 pocket folders. Evergreen Printing is offering a flat rate discount of $750 for all new customers. How much will this job cost her after the discount? Step one, we identify the discount. It's $750. Step two, does she qualify for the discount? In this case, she does because the discounts for all new customers and Marianne has never worked with Evergreen Printing before. Then we can take the job cost, which was quoted as $11,600, and subtract the flat rate discount, which is $750, and when we do that, the total cost to the customer is $10,850. Try this next example on your own. We will go through the answer together on the next slide. Arnold is working on a design project that will need to be printed. He received a price quote from Lighthouse Printing Solutions for $86,950 to print 110,000 self-help manuals. Lighthouse Printing Solutions is offering a $3,000 discount for all jobs priced over $50,000. How much will Arnold pay to print his self-help manuals? Step one, we identify the discount, which was $3,000. Step two, we decide if we qualify for the discount. Arnold's job qualifies because his quote was for $86,950, which is more than $50,000. So 
So then we plug our information into the formula. The job cost was $86,950. We can subtract our discount of $3,000. And then Arnold will pay $83,950. Here's another example. Give this one a try on your own, and we'll review the answer on the next slide. Esther received a price quote from Mile High Press to print and bind 1,000 yearly calendars. They are charging $3,775, but are offering a discount of $250 for all jobs priced over $5,000. How much will Esther pay for her calendars? In this example, the discount was $250. And in step two, we figured out that Esther does not qualify for the discount because her job was priced at $3,775. So she doesn't qualify because her job's not over 5000 So then if we plug this information into the formula, the job cost is still $3,775. But in this case, the discount ends up being zero. So we subtract zero, and Esther will still pay $3,775. Variable rate discounts are calculated very similarly to flat rate discounts. The only difference is that there's an intermediate step because one of the values is variable. A variable discount is a percentage that is taken off the overall cost of an item or a job. It is different for every item or job because it is a percentage based on the value of the item or the job. A 5% discount on a $10,000 job is less than a 5% discount on a $100,000 job. You save more when you spend more when working with variable discounts. The only caveat is making sure you qualify for the discount. If you don't qualify for the discount, you can't take any money off of the purchase price. So the steps that we're going to follow to calculate a variable rate discount, which you'll see are very similar to the flat rate discounts, are to first identify the discount value, and in these problems it will be a percentage. Two, we are going to determine do we or do we not qualify for that discount. Three. If we qualify for the discount, we then need to calculate what the value of the discount is. That's what's new. So we need to calculate what 5% of $100,000 is. Then once we know what that value is, we can subtract the discount from the cost of the job or the item. The formula we'll use is the same formula we use for flat rate discounts. We'll take the cost of the job, we'll subtract the discount, and we'll get the total cost to the customer. The only difference is that that discount value is now a percentage and you have to calculate what it is equal to. So for example one here, Jones Printing Company is offering a 5% discount for all new customers. Every job produced for a new customer will be reduced by 5%. How much will Susan pay for her printing job if she was quoted $1,750 to print 3,000 notepads? She has never worked with Jones Printing Company before. So the steps we'll follow are one, identify what the discount is. The discount is 5%. Step two, do we qualify for the discount? A discount is for all new customers. Susan has never worked with this company before, so she qualifies for the discount. What's different is that when we get to step three, we have to calculate what the value of the discount is. So we need to calculate what is 5% of the total job cost. In this case, the job cost is $1,750. So to do that, there's this little pop-out bubble. When you are calculating a percentage, what I want you to do is to literally ask yourself a word problem question. What is the percentage, in this case 5% of the value? In this case, the job is $1,750. It's a word problem that we're then going to convert into a math problem. To convert the word problem into a math problem, we can convert the percentage to a decimal by dividing by 100. So if you divide 5 by 100, it will come out to 0 0.05. Of in mathematics is multiplication, so you're going to change of to a multiplication sign and then just carry over the value. So in this case, what is 5% of $1,750 ends up being 5% divided by 100 is 0 0.05 of becomes a multiplication sign, and then the value of the project was $1,750. So now we have a math problem we can plug into our calculator. 0 0.05 times 1,750 equals $87.50. This means that the discount to Susan 
is $87.50. So then when we get to step four, we can subtract the discount from our job cost. So we can go back to our formula and we can plug in our job cost, which was $1,750. We can subtract our discount, which we now have figured out to be $87.50. And the total cost of the customer will be $1,662.50. Let's try another example together. Mary Ann has decided to send a pocket folder printing job to Evergreen Printing Company. She has never worked with Evergreen Printing before. She has received a price quote for $11,600 to print 31,500 pocket folders. Evergreen Printing is offering a 7.5% discount for all new customers. How much will this job cost after the discount? So again, step one, what is the discount? Discount is 7.5%. Two, do we qualify for the discount? The discount is for all new customers. Marianne has never worked with Evergreen before. Yes, she qualifies for the discount. Step three, we need to now ask ourselves, what is seven, you can see it over here, what is seven and a half percent of the total cost of the job? In this case, $11,600. So we're asking ourselves, what is seven and a half percent of $11,600? Seven and a half percent is converted to uh, a number by dividing by 100. When you divide 7.5 by 100, it comes out to 0 0.075. Of and math is multiplication, so we'll change that to a multiplication sign and we'll carry over our job cost. 0 0.075 times 11,600 equals $870. So that's how much she'll save. So we can take that and plug it into our formula. Our job cost was $11,600. Our discount we've calculated to be $870. When we subtract that, Mary Ann will pay $10,730 to print her pocket folders. If your answer was $8,700 for the discount, you are not converting your percentage to a decimal properly. You need to make sure you put the whole value, 7.5, into your calculator and divide by 100. It should be 0 0.075, not 0.75. Give this next problem a try on your own and we'll review the answers together. Arnold is working on a design project that will need to be printed. He received a price quote from Lighthouse Printing Solutions for $86,950 $86, to print 110,000 self-help manuals. Lighthouse Printing Solutions is offering a 12% discount on all jobs priced over $100,000. How much will Arnold pay to print his self-help manuals? Step one, identify the discount value. In this case, they're offering a 12% discount. Step two, do we qualify for the discount? The answer is no. The discount is only for jobs priced over $100,000. Arnold's job is quoted as $86,950. So step three, we don't have to do anymore because we don't qualify for the job, but we can finish up if you want to by doing step four, taking the job cost, $86,950, and subtracting the discount which we have figured out is zero. So Arnold will still pay $86,950. Here's another example to try on your own. Esther received a price quote from Mile High Press to print and bind 1,000 yearly calendars. They are charging $375, but are offering a discount of 3.6% for all jobs priced over $1,000. How much will Esther pay for her calendars? Step one, identify the discount value. In this case, it's 3.6%. Step two, does Esther qualify for the discount? In this case, yes. Her job is priced over $1,000, so she does qualify. So then we get to calculate what is the value of the discount. So we have to ask ourselves, what is 3.6% of $3,775? Because that's the cost of her job. 3.6% converted to a decimal is 0 0.036. So put 3.6 into your calculator and then divide by 100 and it comes out to 0 0.036. And then we can multiply that times the value of the project, which is $3,775. So the total discount for Esther will be $135.90. Step four, we can subtract the discount from our job cost using the formula below. 
which is $3,775 minus the discount of $135.90 to give us a total of $3,639.10. When sending a job to be printed, you will most likely receive multiple quotes. In general, you should get at least three quotes so that you can compare the prices. However, price is just one variable when deciding where to send your printed job. In addition, you will want to consider the printing method, the location, the specific press being used, how many colors the press can print on, how fast the company can finish your job, and more. Use the example problems on the next few slides to practice comparing price quotes to determine which company is really offering the lowest price. Joshua Moray can't decide whether to send his book to Smith Printing Company, which we will say is SPC, or Leatherby Printing Company, which we'll call LPC. SPC will charge him $27,345 to print and bind 71,000 books. LPC wants to charge him more, $28,150, but they're offering a $500 discount for all new customers. Joshua has never worked with Jones Printing Company before, which should be LPC, LPC before, so he can take advantage of the discount. Where should Joshua send his books to be printed and bound if he wants to pay the lowest price? And how much will he pay? So in this case, we can take Smith, let's do Smith Printing Company first. We can take Smith Printing Company and we can use our formula of job cost minus discount equals total cost to the customer because there is no discount. So Smith Printing Company is charging $27,345. We can subtract zero because there is no discount and we know that Joshua will pay $27,345. We also need to compare the cost for Leatherby Printing Company. Leatherby is charging $28,150. However, they're offering a discount for all new customers, and the problem has noted that uh, Joshua has never worked with them before, even though I typoed the, it should be LPC, not JPC. So in this case, Joshua does qualify for the discount, so we can take $28,150 and subtract the discount of $500. We're left with $27,650. However, when we compare the two, even though we're getting a discount at Leatherby Printing Company, Smith Printing Company is still cheaper. So if we were sending the job strictly based on price, we would send it to Smith Printing Company. Here's another example. Joshua Moray, he is doing the same job, but now it's a variable rate discount. Joshua Moray can't decide whether to send his book to Smith Printing Company or Leatherby Printing Company. Smith has said they will charge him, again, $27,345 to print and bind 71,000 books. But Leatherby Printing Company wants to charge him $28,150, which we know is more. But this time, instead of a flat rate discount, they're going to offer him 10% off for being a new customer. Joshua has never worked with LPC before, so he can take advantage of the discount. Where should he send his books to be printed and bound if he wants to pay the absolute lowest price, and how much will he pay? So again, when we take a look at Smith Printing Company, we're still going to say that our formula is the cost of the job, which is $27,345. He's getting no discount at Smith, so we'll subtract $0, and we'll get a total cost for Smith Printing Company to be $27,345. Now when we compare that to Leatherby Printing Company, the cost of the job is $28,150, and we're going to subtract a discount but it's a variable discount and get the total cost to the customer. So that's where this little pop out comes. In this case, he gets a 10% discount and he qualifies for it because he's a new customer. So we need to ask ourselves, what is 10% of $28,150? To do this, we're going to convert it from a word problem into a math problem. So 10% divided by 100 is 0.1 or 0 0.10. Then of in mathematics is changed to a multiplication sign and then we bring down our value. So that gives us, instead of what is 10% of 28,150, we get 0.1 or 0 0.10 times the value of the project, which is 28,150. When we multiply 0.1 times 28,150, the total discount is $2,815. So now we can take that value and we can plug it back into our formula. So it's the job cost minus the discount. The job cost 28150 
the discount we just calculated to be 2815 which means the total cost that he would pay for this job at Leatherby Printing Company is now $25,335, which is less than Smith Printing Company, so he should send it to Leatherby. We are going to use the same concepts to calculate commission, but we only have to do half of the work. So a commission is a remuneration for services rendered or products sold. Printing and graphic salesmen traditionally work on a commission basis. This means their salaries earned through the percentages they receive for the jobs they bring in. They don't bring any jobs in, they don't make any money. The steps for calculating commissions are as follows. One, we're going to identify the amount of sales for a given period of time. For all of our examples, we're going to say it's by the year. Two, we're going to identify the sales commission rate, the percentage that the, the salesman receives for that, those sales. And then two, we are going to calculate the value of the commission based on the percentage that we know that that salesman gets. So in this example, Tom Montgomery sells 600 jobs in a year with a total value of $1,345,000. He will receive a certain percentage of the total sales cost. That percentage can be negotiated by the salesman when they are hired Let's assume that Todd's commission is 7% currently. How much money will Todd make in a year if he works strictly on commission and he gets 7% of all sales? So step one, we need to identify the amount of sales for a given amount of time. In this case, Todd sold $1,345,000 in one calendar year. Two, we need to identify the commission rate that he receives. He receives 7%. And last, we are going to calculate the value of the commission. This is just like calculating the value of a variable rate discount, except we get to stop when we're done. Whatever that per percentage is, is the amount that the salesman gets to keep. So in this case, again, we're going to ask ourselves, what is 7% of the total sales for the year? In this case, that's 1,345,000. But that's a word problem, not a math problem, so we need to convert it from a word problem to a math problem. 7% divided by 100 converts it to 0 0.07. That's a number we can work with. Of is changed to a multiplication sign, and then we bring down the value that we're calculating. That gives us a math problem of 0 0.07 times $1,345,000. When we plug that into our calculator, the value of that 7% is $94,150. You can see that here, our math problem. That means that Todd's salary for that year would be $94,150. Try this next example on your own. Don't forget that the value of the percentage you calculate is the commission. You do not need to do any more steps once you calculate what that percentage is equal to. Michelle Rodriguez sold $3,500,000 worth of printing for Spokane Printing Solutions in 2021. Her commission was 5% that year. How much money did she make for her salary in 2021? Again, we need to identify the amount sold, and that's $3.5 million. We also need to identify the commission that she receives. She receives 5%. And then we need to ask ourselves, what is 5% of her total sales? So what is 5% of 3,500,000? That's a word problem. To convert it to a math problem, we'll divide the percentage by 100. It comes out to 0 0.05. Of becomes a multiplication sign, and then we bring down 3.5 million. It's this value here. 0 0.05 times 3,500,000 equals 175,000. So Michelle's salary for that year was $175,000. Here's another example to try on your own. We'll go through the answer together on the next slide. Todd Montgomery decided to renegotiate his commission rate. His company agreed to pay him 7.25% commissions for all of his sales for the next year. What will Todd's annual sales commission be if he's able to sell the same amount again next year, which was $1,345,000? Step one, identify how much he sold or he's hoping to sell. 
which in this case he's hoping to sell the same amount next year, which is $1,345,000. His new commission rate is 7.25. So when we divide 7.25 by 100, we get 0 0.0725. Of becomes a multiplication sign, and then we can bring down 1,345,000. 0 0.0725 times 1,345,000 equals $97,512.50. So his salary would increase to $97,512.50. Here's another example. Michelle Rodriguez decided to renegotiate her commission as well. Her company agreed to pay her 6% commission for all of her sales next year. What will Michelle's annual sales commission be? if she is able to sell the same amount again next year. So if we remember correctly, she sold $3,500,000 last year. Take a minute to calculate your answer on your own and we'll review the answer on the next slide. Michelle's sales will hopefully be $3,500,000 and her new sales commission is 6%. So we need to ask ourselves what is 6% of Three million five hundred thousand dollars. Six percent divided by a hundred comes out to 0 0.06. Multiply times the amount that she is hopefully going to sell, which is three million five hundred thousand dollars. 0 0.06 times that value comes out to two hundred and ten thousand dollars. So if she is able to sell the same amount that she sold last year, her salary will increase to two hundred and ten thousand dollars. We have finished the lesson on discounts and commissions. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to define what a discount is and list examples of how discounts can be applied to the graphic arts industry and even your own industries. You will be able to list the formula for calculating flat rate discounts and variable rate discounts, and you're able to calculate those values. You're able to compare price quotes from multiple companies to determine who actually has the lowest price after a discount. You know what a commission is and how to calculate a sales commission based on a percentage that that salesperson receives. If you have any questions, please attend online office hours or my weekly live info sessions.